since we started this morning prayer, uh, we are really seeing uh, so many things breaking. Amen. And everywhere we are seeing uh, uh, changes happening. And uh, because the uh, main backbone for the ministry is prayer. Without prayer, only activity doesn't uh, do anything. So I, I'm noticing now healings are more happening. Anywhere we go, we are seeing healings happening, even Scarborough. And we saw so much uh, improvement in uh, Lita also. We are seeing that uh, uh, and even in, uh, in all our lives also changing. I've seen a lot of improvement in Donna. Where is Donna? Donna? Um, this morning I saw Donna. She's left? Okay. So we saw some changes happening in Donna also. And uh, so I just encourage you, Amen. Uh, all the church, please uh, come if you can in the morning, 5.30 to 7.30. But on Sundays, it will be um, 9 o'clock. You know? um, I really don't want to stop this. Not after 21 days also, I want to continue this. Actually, long time back, God was telling me, to do morning prayers. I even we did that for some time. But you know what? That hunger has to come from people. Even though I was just telling, people were doing because I told them to do. But this time what happened, God only put that in mercy. <laughs> so it's not to me telling anybody. So this time God only put that desire in people's hearts and she came with that and uh, we started it and God started working here. Hallelujah. So um, um, today, uh, let us welcome uh, Hina uh, to come and she's going to share the word. Let us all welcome. questions and how easy it was for me 
to overcome my flesh when I got answers to those questions. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a very, um, you know, as a very young believer, as a, a baby Christian. Uh, one of the questions I had was, how do I prosper in life? Does anybody have that question? Everybody has that question. No matter what stage of life you are at, you have that question. How do I prosper in life? So can I have Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 33, please? So this is the answer I have for that question. So just to, just to give you a prelude of this, um, in chapter 5 of Deuteronomy is where we have the Ten Commandments. Um, and 33 is the last verse of this chapter. Um, so it says, You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, and you may live, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. That is my answer. That's the answer I got from God. That if I want to prosper in life, I have to obey Him. I have to obey His ways. I have to walk with Him. Um, can I have it in the NIV? Can you turn this on? It's not on. Can I have that in the NIV, please? Okay. So it says, walk in all the ways that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. So the only way for me to possess my land is if I walk in his ways. If I don't walk in his ways, I will not possess my land. Simple. It's very simple. So how do we prosper in life? How is prosperity measured? How can you measure prosperity? How much... I possess of my land, how much I possess of my surroundings, meaning how much of what God is speaking to me is revealed into my surroundings, how much of what God is doing in my life is revealed in my family, how much of God, what God is doing in my life is revealed in my workplace. That is how you measure prosperity in life. The only way you will prosper in life is if you walk in his commands. If you don't walk in his commands, you will not see prosperity. Um, can I have Psalms 128 verse 1, please? Blessed are all who fear the Lord who walk in his ways, blessed, who are blessed, who fear him and who walk in his ways. What is the opposite of blessing? Curse, curse, curse right? So we leave it there, we'll come back to it. So after I received my answer, I said, okay. So after I received my answer for that, I said, okay, Lord, I am going to walk in your ways. I am going to obey you. You show me how to, how to walk in your ways because I don't know. I am a new Christian. I, I don't know. When I say new Christian, it doesn't mean like I was born in a Christian family. But still, you come to a stage where you realize you're a Christian and you start more wanting to walk a Christian life, but you don't know where to go. So when I was like that, I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to walk in your ways. I'm going to do what you have commanded me to do, but I don't know how to do it. You show me. You show me how to do it. So then I had another question. 
after that. How do I make sure I guard myself from sin and I'm able to see through the works of the enemy? Who has that question? You have that question? I, that question is still not completely answered for me, but God is revealing more things to me. How do I make sure I guard myself from sin and I'm able to see through the works of the enemy? Many people consider it very difficult to do that, right? It's an issue. It's an issue. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. It happened in the spring of the year, the time when kings go to, out to battle, when David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. What is happening here to David? David is a leader. He's a king. He's been to battles. He knows what sin is. He's falling into sin. How? It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle. He was not supposed to be home that day. He was supposed to be at battle. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. So God showed me, make sure you position yourself at the right place at the right time. Because if you don't, you're going to end up being on a balcony and you're going to go into sin and you will not even know about it. He fell into sin. Mur adultery, deception, murder. What? Because he was supposed to be at battle. He was not supposed to be resting at home. How many times this happens to us when God is telling us or pastors are telling us, Let's do, go do this. Let's go do this. This is the time that we have to prepare and pray. This is the time we have to go and prepare for that uh, event. This is the time we have to go and prepare for this. How many times you say, no, I'm busy. I have stuff to do. You're going to end up at the wrong place at the wrong time. And sin is waiting there to catch you. So if you made a decision to obey. If David made a decision that day to obey the demand of his call, he was called to be a warrior, he was called to be a leader. If he chose to obey the demand of his call, which told him he's not supposed to be at home in spring, he's supposed to be fighting out with the rest of the gang, he would not fall into sin that day. Right? So when you yourself decide that you don't want to obey, then only sin will catch you. But if you walk in obedience, sin has nothing to do with you. Because sin cannot come in the place that God has ordained you to be. God protects you where he takes you. So do you have an answer now? Do you have an answer now? Amen. Good. Another scripture I want to give you for this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28, NIV, please. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. So you have to guard yourself against deception. And against sin. Sorry, 58, not 28. I was thinking that doesn't sound right. Verse 58. Yeah, therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. If you are picking up a glass of water, 
to give to someone in the name of God? No, that it's not in vain. If you are standing firm for God in a situation, know that it's not in vain. God is going to reward you because God is going to bless you because he blesses obedience. We just learned that in the first question. He blesses the ones who are obedient. Okay, so now we have that answer. How to, how to protect yourself from deception and from sin. Now my next question after that was, okay, how do I recognize? Because in the body of Christ, outside in the world, there is so much deception. There is so much deceit. The enemy, when he can't speak directly to you, he will use people around you to sway you from your path. So what do you do? How do I recognize people's lies and deceptions? How do I recognize? Does anybody have that question? How do I recognize what is right and what is wrong? How do I recognize what is from God and what is not from God? How do I recognize that when somebody is asking me to do something, if that person is what that person is asking, is it from God or from the devil? Is it deception or is it truth? How do I recognize? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. He who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. So I was very, I was, this answer that I got, I'm, 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 I was surprised because it doesn't really directly answer my question. Because I'm asking, how do I recognize people? How do I recognize what they want? How do I recognize if it's a sin or a deception? Or, or if it's from God? How do I recognize that? So I got this, he who eats discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. I ask God, Lord, what does that mean? I don't know. Like, that doesn't answer my question. Then God showed me, if you want to recognize if a person is coming from me or not, check if that person obeys their authorities or not. Obeys the people who are over them. Does that person respect the authorities? Does that person obey the authorities? Does that person gossip about the authorities? That, that, does that person gossip about the people who correct them? Check. Because those are the people who are going to lead you astray. Right? This is a weapon to dis when now when I am talking to people, I am after God so gave me that revelation. Now when I speak to people, when I'm when somebody is coming to me and asking me to do something, or telling me a story about someone, or saying anything about someone, I take my sunglasses out that have Proverbs 10, 17 written on it. Wear them. See that person through those glasses. And then check. And if you don't know if whoever the authority over that person is, because many times when people come and ask you to do things in, in real life, you don't know anybody else except them. Set a boundary. You you want to you want to figure out if that person is going to is is what that person is coming to you, and if that person is coming from God or not. Set a boundary in the relationship in the first time. Set a boundary and say, okay, you know, if that person is saying, I want you to come and meet me at 7 tonight. Nah, I can't do that. I have stuff to do with my family and I'm sorry I, I'm not able to do that. No, that's not right. You have to meet me. You need to do that. If you don't do that, you know, you, you are not a good person. You're this, you're that. You immediately know that that person does not respect boundaries. That person does not respect relationships. That person is in it for himself or herself only. So if that person does not respect a boundary that you are making because you have stuff to do with your family, then what that person is bringing to you is not from God. Be careful. 
I'm talking about the world. I'm talking about people who are not saved yet. So you can check. You can check and guard yourself always. Always guard yourself. Never ever, never ever take this, this guarding yourself. This is an ongoing thing. It doesn't, it, it's not something that happens once and stops. Every day you have to guard yourself. Every day you have to put this Proverbs 10, 17 sunglasses on and make sure that when you're speaking to people, when people are speaking to you, usually, see for me, it's very easy to figure out. Because if I have, let's say, a, work co a work co-worker come to me and talk to me about her boss, I become very careful with those people because that person is rebelling authority. I'm very careful. I never agree with that person. I never stay silent. I always will tell that person, please, don't say that. She's nice. No, don't worry, like she's good. Maybe she said that to you because something had, had to be fixed in you. I never stay quiet. And after that, that person never comes back to me and tries to gossip with me. I know right away how to deal with it. So we have to set those standards right. If we don't set those standards right, we are going to be deceived again and again and again and again. Every time you gain a little bit of momentum, there's going to be a person who's going to come up, pull you down. Again you will gain momentum, pull you down. Constantly, enemy is going to pull you down, pull you down, pull you down. Why? Because he does not want your call to be fulfilled. You are a threat to him. If you are fully alive, you are a threat to him. Have you noticed the theme of this theme of this message yet or no? Can somebody tell me what it is? Can somebody tell me what it is? No? Obedience. Obedience. How did I overcome the first one? The scripture that God gave me was about obedience to his word, to what he's saying. The second one, obedience to my call. David was on the, on the balcony because he did not obey the requirements of his call. Obedience. This one, obedience to what? The word of God. Never talk about your authorities. Never, never rebel your authorities. Even when they are wrong, do not disrespect them. Even when they are wrong, do not gossip about them. Obedience to the word of God. Let's go to Psalm 68, verse 6. God sets the lonely in families. He leave, leaves for the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. This is another way of figuring out how to be careful with people. Because if you are not careful, God will never use you to impact those people's lives. The reason why God puts people in your lives in the first place is so that you can touch them. But if you don't recognize the deceit that the enemy is putting in you through them, they will make your life sun scorched. They will make sun scorched. In, in um, NKJV it says like desert, I think. They will make your life like desert. So you have to be careful. When God is putting people in your life, God wants you to help them, to touch them, to take care of them, to bring them out their problems, to, to do whatever it takes to bring them into their purpose and into their call. But if you don't recognize the work of the enemy, they are going to pull you with them. So you have to be very careful. These are the two things that answered my question. How do I recognize when people lie and how do I save myself from deception? Because deception 
is when you end up in a sun scorched land. Amen? Amen. There's no fruitfulness. How do you know that somebody is in a sun scorched land? There's no fruitfulness. There's no growth. There's no water. There's no life. They are going around circles. Their circumstances are not changing. Their situations are not changing. No matter how much they are praying, nothing is changing. Nothing is happening. Why? Because they are in a sun scorched land. God is leading you to them to pull them out of the sun scorched land. Please, don't go with them into the sun scorched land. Recognize their deceit. This is a very this is this is a very recent question that I had from God. And I was stumped at the answer. Do I obey even when I disagree? Do I obey even when I disagree? Obey who? Obey authorities? Obey the word of God? Obey the people that God has put in my life as my spiritual leaders. Do I still obey them? Do I still my boss? Uh, still obey my boss even when I disagree? Do I? What do I do? I ask God, Lord, what should I do? I disagree. I don't agree with what they are doing. I don't agree with what they are saying. It's I can see through things the way they are not seeing it yet. But I disagree with them. It's hard for me to obey. It's very hard. I, it's hard for me to stay in that spot to obey. I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting to obey. But it's hard for me to obey. I asked God, I said, Lord, do I still obey when I disagree? When I know that what is happening is not right, do I still obey? The simple answer I got is yes. Simple, yes. And then God, later, God spoke to me about why. Let's go to Mark 14, chapter, uh, chapter 14, verse 36. So this is, I'll just give you a quick preview of what, what's happening here. This is Jesus. He's close to being handed over to the soldiers. And he, this is his, his, his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And this is what he's praying about. He's saying, Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. What is happening with Jesus here? What is happening with Jesus here? He's fighting his flesh. His flesh is leading him to remind him about the pain that he's about to go through. The problems that he's about to go through. The shamefulness that he's about to go through. And he's there saying, Father, you know, many times it happens to us where we are in situations where we don't know what to do. The pain of that situation is so much. It's hard, hard. You know that God is going to pull you out. You know that this is happening because you're paying the price for your call. Jesus knew. Jesus was ready. He had no interest or idea of disobeying his father. Please understand, when Jesus is praying that prayer, Jesus does not want to disobey God. De Jesus does not have any heart to disobey Father. He wants to do it. He wants to do the right thing. He doesn't want to do the wrong thing. He wants to save the whole humanity. He knows that people have been waiting for him. He knows the generations, the earth has been waiting for him, the heaven. He knows all that. With all that, he's praying that. Father, if possible, please. If possible, but not my will, your will. So, 
he's, he's got his favorite three disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. I want to be one of them. Uh, in, 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 in verse 33, it says that he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began uh, to be troubled and deeply distressed. And he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death, stay here and watch. So I'm reading from same chapter, verse 33 onwards. He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that it may be, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what your will. Basically, he's saying, Father, there is nothing impossible for you. You can save humanity even if I don't drink this cup. I know you are great. I know you are mighty. But not my will, your will. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray. Verse 38. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Do you think Jesus is just passing that statement just by the way? Or did he just experience that statement and then he told Peter that? He just went through that experience fresh and he came and he said, my spirit is willing, my spirit knows what is right, but my flesh is pulling me down. It's not letting me obey God and I am struggling. You know, there is nothing. Many times we say, oh, for Jesus it was easy, you know, because he's the son of God and he, he came on this earth and he was predestined to do things and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not easy for me to fight my flesh. How can I fight my flesh? How, will, how, how, can I, how can I obey even when I'm not ready to obey? How? This is how. Pray. Pray and watch. Watch and pray. Stay alert. Watch and pray. Jesus, when he said watch and pray, he said stay alert and pray. That word watch meaning stay awake, stay alert and pray. Not pray in your drowsiness, not pray in, in it's not at the same time, meaning you have to always be alert, you have to always be praying, you have to always be alert, you have to always be praying. If you are not praying, be sure you are alert. If you are praying, be sure you are alert. Make sure you are always alert. Guard yourself. Take care. Otherwise, enemy is going to come and tell you your flesh is weak. It's okay. Let it go this time. Let it happen this time. It's okay. Give it up. Let it be. Why do you want to pay a price for your call? Let it be. Leave it. I just went through this. I'm telling you, when you come out of this battle, how he saved humanity, God is going to use you like that. What Jesus did on the cross, through you, that is going to be done to the believers, the non-believers, the people who are outside. God is going to use you like that. If you can obey, even when you disagree. So, easy now, right? Easy to obey even when we disagree. God says that we're not supposed to rebel authorities. God says not even the authorities who are in our country, who are not godly, we're not even supposed to rebel them. How much more people who are godly? We cannot rebel them. Have you seen that each and every one of this question I have from God there is a common answer, obedience. Nothing, you can do nothing without obedience. If you are saying, I want to be a big preacher, but it's very hard for me to obey what my pastors are telling me. Sorry to inform you, you're not going to become a big preacher. God, I have prophecies after prophecies that God has called me to heal people. God has called me to go to nations. God has called me to bring deliverance to people. And your pastor says, oh, can you come and help me with this thing? 
And you say, I'm sorry, I, I have something else I need to do that day. I'm sorry, you're not there yet. You're not paying the price for your call yet. Sorry. If anybody is in that position, please examine yourselves and come out of it. Because there is a price to be paid for your call. You know, it's very easy when we tell people, I'm called to do this. I'm called to do that. I got a, I got a, I got a prophecy from that big prophet that came and told me that I'm going to go to Africa. Do you know I'm going to go to Africa? Okay, what are you doing about it? You want to go to Africa? You want to save people in Africa? What are you going to do about it? Start by obeying your pastors. Start by obeying your pastors. If you don't obey your pastors, you have not even made the first step to go towards your call. Let's look at Romans 13, verse 1 and 3. Uh, 1 to 3. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and he will commend you. Oh, my pastors don't appreciate me. They never look at me, no matter what I do, no matter how much I pray, no matter how much I praise them, no matter how much I like them, no matter how much I love them, they don't care about me. You can love, you can like, you can jump, you can dance, you can do whatever you want. If you don't obey, even God is saying, then do what is right and he will commend you. Your authorities will commend you when you obey them. God is saying that, not me. It's in the book. <laughs> okay, one more question. So that one is done. So now we know how to how to deal with that. Now we know how to fight with that. Next one. How do I gain authority to overcome the works of the enemy in my life and help people around me? Meaning, how do I become a city taker? Isn't that what all we are praying for? Isn't that all what we want? I want my city. I want Milton to be saved. I dream about it. I pray about it. I think about it. I imagine about it. I see visions about it. I ask God about it. Like this is it's like the same like breathing. I it's like breathing for me. That's how much I want my city to be saved. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse verse 1 to 10. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands. I give you today the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. He will set you high in your cities only if you can pray, you can jump, you can dance. You can use every Christian tool you know. It's not going to help you if you don't have a heart to obey. Only if you obey. Only if you have a heart to obey. God is going to set you. So Deuteronomy 28 is an amazing, uh, amazing chapter. When you go home, you read. It talks about the blessings of obedience and it talks about what happened when you are disobedient. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can go home and read it. But we can just read a few verses, maybe, maybe two more verses, uh, three and four. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. The crops of your land and the young of your livestock will be blessed. Your old works and your new works will be blessed. The calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. 
everything will be blessed. You want your, to see your children's children blessed? Learn to obey. You know, as parents, me also, I want my children to be very obedient. And, you know, we always set boundaries and rules for our children so that they become obedient, to keep them safe and to teach them obedience. But if I don't follow those rules, I don't follow those boundaries, I don't do what I expect them to do, no matter how much rules you set up, no matter how good schools you send them to, they will come out rebellious. Because you are rebellious. Your children will only be blessed if you also obey. Obedience is a choice. Obedience is not a gift. Many people, you know, like faith, righteousness is a gift. Faith is a gift. Obedience is not a gift. It's a choice you make. Oh, sister, I can only obey if, you know, God speaks to me. God is not going to push you to obey. It's your choice. You can choose to obey. You can choose not to obey. It's your choice. God is not going to push you. God is not going to tell you, no, you have to obey. Everywhere in the Bible, it's written about obedience. It says, if you obey, this will happen. If you obey, this will happen. Wherever there is an if you, that means it's a choice. It's not a gift. It cannot be imparted. Sister Suleika cannot pray for me and impart her obedience on me. It's not going to happen. It will not happen. You have to make a choice. If you don't make a choice, it will not happen. This one is the most amazing one, I'm telling you. I was so amazed when I, when I asked God this question and the answer I got. How do I become a treasure? You know what a treasure is? A treasure is something that God protects. How do I become a treasure for God? I never ask God, how do I become a treasure for my church? How do I become a treasure for my pastors? How do I become a treasure for my husband? My children? My workplace? No, not interested in any of that. I ask God, Lord, how do I become a treasure for you? I want to be a treasure for you. I don't care about anything else. I know all that will be added. I want to be a treasure for you. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, and I read please. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasure possession, although the whole <coughs> earth is mine. Whole earth belongs to God. Out of the whole earth, how do I become a treasure for God? You know what treasure is? You know the, what's the difference between a person who's a treasure? What's the difference between a treasure, like you know, like you have your gold and silver and all those important precious things that you have in your house that you consider your treasure, and then you have your regular plates and spoons and dishes and cushions and couches. Right? That's also belonging to you only, but that's not treasure. Your gold, your silver, your um, important precious things that are important to you, what do you do with them? What do you do with them? You put them in a safe place, you make sure they are taken care of, you make sure that a thief does not come and take them, you make sure you hide them from the eyes of public when they come to your house, you don't put it on public display, you hide them. If you are a treasure, God is going to do that to you. God is going to hide you. God is going to protect you. God is going to take care of you. God is going to keep you safe in a nice metal safe where nothing can get to you. Only if you are a treasure. And how will you become a treasure? If you obey him fully. The key is not obedience here. The key is fully, full obedience. Not partial obedience. Oh, okay, I will, I will do it. But I can't do it that way. I will do it this way. I'm still obeying, but I'm doing it my way. 
That's not full obedience. Full obedience is if I tell my daughter to go and get me a glass of water with two drops of lemon in it. She comes back to me with a glass of water with two drops of lemon in it. She doesn't go in the kitchen, gets a glass and puts as much lemon as she wants and brings it to me. I will still have lemon water, but it's not two drops of lemon. There's a difference. She obeyed, but not fully. Right? You see what full obedience is? There's a big difference. So the ones who fully obey are treasures. God is going to protect you. God is going to keep you safe. God is going to hide you from the eyes of the thieves, the enemy who comes to kill, steal and destroy. He's going to hide you. He will not let the enemy see you. He will stand there and guard you. He will keep you in a special place in his house. He will not just leave you outside like a couch. Amen? Amen. So now we know how we become treasures. So now after all this jig about obedience, how do I become obedient? How do, how do I become obedient? What do I do? What do I have to do? Like what rituals do I have to do? How many times I have to pray and how many times I have to jump and how, how many times I have to I have to shake to become obedient? Or to become obedient. Anybody has that question? I had that question. I asked God. I said, Lord, okay, so I, now I know that the, question, uh, the answer to all my problems is obedience. All the issues I have, you know, if I want blessing, I need to be obedient. If I want to be a city taker, I need to be obedient. If I want to be treasured, I want to be obedient. So everything is obedience. So now how do I become obedient? What's the formula? There's no formula, by the way. <laughs> so let's look at Psalms 143, verse 10. will for you are my God may your good spirit lead me on a level ground you can't become obedient, obedient on your own he has to teach you you have to pray this I pray this Lord teach me I don't know how I can't it's hard for me I don't know Lord teach me the only way he can teach you is if you are teachable. If you've decided that you don't want to be taught, he will not push you. He will not teach you. Let's look at Revelation 3 verse 20. Please. Here I am. I stand at the door. A very popular scripture. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. It's a very popular scripture. But I'll share the revelation I got about the scripture and how it's related to obedience. You know, every one of us has areas in our lives where we have doors open, where Jesus can walk in any time. And we have areas in our life where doors are closed. We are closed to God. We don't want God to teach us. We don't even want God to know that that area actually exists. We close the door and we guard it. And then we, we think, oh no, nobody can enter. Enemy can't enter, God can't enter. Nobody can enter, I'm guarding it. The reason why the door is closed is because the enemy closed it. Jesus is saying, I'm standing there and I'm knocking. I will keep knocking till you open the door. Keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking. He will never, till you live on this earth, he will not stop knocking. He will keep knocking. Only if you hear the knock, you will open the door. And only way you will hear the knock, if you think that there is an issue that needs to be fixed and I need to open the door and let God in. That's how you will hear it. Otherwise, you will never hear it. Till you realize 
there is an issue, you will not hear the knock. There are many different areas in our life where Jesus is knocking at the door and saying, please open. I'm here. I'm here. I will take care of it. Open it. Open it. He will speak to you. He will bring word to you. He will bring prophecies to you. Knock, 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 knock. Keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking. But only time you will hear is when you realize that there is an issue that needs to be fixed, that God has to be allowed in to fix it. That's how you become obedient. When you open the door and Jesus comes in, he will use your pastors. He will use your mentors. He will use people around you to speak to you, to talk to you. Sometimes God uses my kids to talk to me. <laughs> when I am not listening, God is using my kids to talk to me. They will come and say something so profound to me that I am just awe. Oh, I'm like, really? Is that how it works? Stay teachable. If you stay teachable, God can teach you. He can walk in and he can fix your problems. If you don't stay teachable, if you think you've attained a certain level of spirituality and you don't need anybody's input anymore, I'm sorry to say you have been deceived already. You have just opened the door for pride to come in. You have just opened the door for everything that is of the enemy to walk in. And you have closed the door to Holy Spirit. So stay teachable. No matter how big you get, stay teachable. There is always something to learn. There is always something to learn. If you stay teachable, you don't have to work on being humble. You will always be humble. Because people who are teachable are humble. People who think they don't need anybody's input in their life, they're not humble. Meaning they're not teachable. It's part and parcel together. You have an issue of fear? Anybody has fears? No, Gideon was scared. Gideon was afraid. His calling wasn't being fulfilled because he was afraid. You know why God went after him? You know why he had encounters? Because he was threshing wheat in the wine press. Do you know why he was threshing wheat in the wine press? Because his job was to thresh wheat. And he wanted to make sure that he threshed that wheat well. And he wanted to make sure that the Amorites didn't get a hand on that wheat. So he was hiding. So he was fearful, but even in that fear, he was choosing to obey his call. God gave him an encounter. He made him mighty. You have an issue of fear? Stay obedient. Your fear will go away. God is going to give you an encounter. The same David. You know why? He became mighty. You know why? He became a treasure because he was obedient. He was obedient to his purpose. He was obedient to his call. One time when he fell into sin, you have an issue with sin? You have any issue with, with, you know, with thinking bad about people, with being crafty, with having issues? You have that issue? David came out of it. Adultery, he came out of it. God forgave him. But he remained teachable. When Prophet Nathan went to him, he listened. He knew right away that he had to obey. Because David was obedient, because he was teachable, he was treasured by God. Daniel, the reason why Daniel was treasured, the reason why God was able to use Daniel might be, he was very obedient. The reason why Noah was used to do what he did, was because when there was no water around, he built a boat. He was obedient. The reason why Moses was able to lead the Israelites out and stand between them and God and pray and intercede was because he was obedient. The reason you have problem with rebellion, remember Jonah? He ran away. 
No, Jonah was very when at the time when God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh, I think when God asked him to go there, he had already been in ministry for a long time. He was new. He was already considered seasoned. But he ran. He said, "I'm going to run away. I'm going to go the other way. Nineveh is this way. I'm going to go this way." He ended ended up in the belly of the whale. God spoke to him. God caught him, brought him back. Why? Because he is obedient. I am trying to tell you that when you have a heart to obey, no matter what problem you fall into, no matter what sin you fall into, it's going to keep you safe. God is going to come after you because you have a heart to obey. But if you don't have a heart to obey, if you don't train yourself if you don't train your heart if you don't train your flesh to obey if you don't pray to god every day that lord keep me teachable lord teach me to obey it will be hard for you to come out of your situations but when you are teachable god can pull david out of adultery god can pull david out of murder God can bring Jonah back into his calling. God will make you to come back to where you are supposed to be only if you are teachable and if you are obedient. You know why? Because people who are obedient are considered sons and daughters. If you are not obedient, you are not considered a son or a daughter. And when our sons and daughters run away, we go after them. Same way, if you run away from God, but you still have a heart to obey, He will come after you. He will come after you. He will catch you. He will give you signs. He will give you visions. He will give you encounters. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were brought out of fire because they were obedient. They chose to obey God. Obedience is protection. Obedience is your covering. Obedience is what keeps you going. That is the secret spice to your life. If you don't have obedience and you have everything else, you don't have anything. You don't have anything. So, now, deliverance. We all know about deliverance. What is deliverance? Deliverance, we speak about deliverance, you know, you delivered, you know, the demon went out. We think immediately, the demon left. But I, I feel that we have to walk in deliverance every day. We have to, in our lives, each one of us has issues, has problems where the enemy has stronghold. Any place where the enemy has stronghold, that area has to be delivered from the enemy. And we have to walk in deliverance every day. Yes, deliverance is when demon leaves, you know, there's a big commotion and the demon leaves and all that. That's also deliverance. But this is also deliverance. Where every day you walk with God, you correct yourself, you make sure that the enemy doesn't have hold in your life. Every day you are doing self-deliverance. You are delivering yourself from the enemy. Have you ever asked the question, okay God, deliverance is happening, so that means I'm delivered. Who am I being delivered to? I ask that question. Who, if, if I'm being delivered every day, who am I being delivered to? Am I delivering, being delivered to my pastors because they're praying for me? Doesn't say anywhere in the Bible. Who am I being delivered to? You know, I'll give you an example God showed me. This is really amazing. He, he taught me about with this example about deliverance. Who am I being delivered to? You know, when you order pizza online, you pay with your credit card, right? And as soon as you pay, with your credit card, that pizza, even though it's not made yet, belongs to you. You've paid for it, it belongs to you, even though it's not in your home yet, it doesn't look like the way it's supposed to look, it doesn't have all the toppings that you want in it, but somewhere in, 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 in somebody's mind, it is being formed and it belongs 
to me because I paid for it with my credit card. It belongs to me. So now all I'm waiting for is for that pizza to be delivered to me in the way that I had imagined it and I placed the order. Right? So, say that pizza is not being delivered to me and I've already paid for it. What will I do? I will call the company. I will call them and I'll say, no, I paid for this pizza. You have to deliver it to me. You, you cannot do this. You know, this is how I want my toppings to be. This is how I want it to look. And eventually, you know, they will take care of it and then there will be someone a delivery guy who will come to your house and deliver the pizza for you just the way you want it. Now, here's what God showed me. Jesus is the one with the credit card. He paid the price for the pizza. The pizza is in the oven. The pizza is getting ready. He, in his mind, decided how the pizza has to look and it's coming, it's, it's going through the, through the process of being made. So when the delivery happens, the delivery doesn't happen to just anybody. The delivery happens to the person who paid for it. So when we get delivered, we get delivered to Jesus. We get delivered to God. We don't get delivered to pastor. We don't get delivered to someone in some church who prayed for us. That person just prayed for us because that person got revelation that, okay, you know, the person who originally thought of this pizza looked like this and praying, making sure that that pizza looks like that. But you get delivered to Jesus. So if you're praying for your children, if you're praying for any situations, Change your prayer. Pray like this. Lord, deliver them. Restore them to yourself. Deliver them to yourself. You take them. You, you take my son. You take my daughter. Deliver them to yourself. Deliver them to yourself. You know, even your blessings, there is no way written in the Bible that the blessings are delivered to you by the devil. Is it written anywhere? No, right? Only everywhere it's written, only God delivers the blessings. So then we also pray also like this, that, oh, uh, you know, the enemy is uh, holding my blessings. Let those uh, blessings be delivered. Let, so, let those blessings be released. And you know, when they are released, you know where they go? God brings them to you. God gives you those blessings. The only thing that is delivered to you is the enemy under your feet under your feet we are delivered to Jesus our blessings are delivered to God he blesses us the devil doesn't release our blessings he releases them because somebody already pray, paid the price for it so it will be released to the master the one who paid the price and he blesses us. God blesses us. It's not the devil. So, pray like this. God, deliver me to yourself. Every day. Little by little. Slowly. Change me. Deliver me. It will keep you humble. Then, you will stop looking at people around you. The issues that you're leaders may have, the issues that your authorities may have, because we are always thinking, oh, they are praying for us, we are going to be delivered to them. No, we are going to be delivered to Jesus. So we pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this word, Lord. I thank you for what you have done today, Lord, for the seed that is sown, Lord, for how this seed is going to become a mustard seed, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you and I pray, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you open our hearts, Lord. You open our eyes, Lord. Lord, the knock that you are putting in our heart right now, Lord, let those doors be open, Lord. Let our ears be open, Lord. Lord, you reveal to us the changes that need to be made in our lives, Lord. Lord, 
way we need to correct ourselves, way we need to submit ourselves, Lord, the doors that need to be opened, where we need to become teachable, Lord, where we need to understand your heart, Lord, where we need to obey you, Lord. Lord, you give us a heart to obey you, Lord, so we can we can prosper in your protection, Lord, so we can be treasured by you, Lord, so we can be a, a worthy, worthy for you, Lord. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that you are raising many treasures in this church, Lord. Lord, that you are raising many, many people in this church that are going to be treasured by you, Lord, because they are going to walk in full obedience. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Lord, let all the fruit that comes from this word magnify you and exalt your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks, Sina. That's really, really amazing, wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> the presence of God is here. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, as she was uh, preaching that, I really kept getting that song. There is no lie that is can stop us. God will come after you. There is no mountain that cannot be climbed. There is no lie that can pull you. His love is going to come after you. He leaves the 19 and he goes for once. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, actually today, you know, I was... Uh, <laughs> last I'm so struggling last night I was having a severe pain in my leg and I could not focus what to preach I was just struggling, struggling, struggling what to preach, my mind could not focus because of the pain and then I last night 11.30 like that I messaged Hina Hina can you preach so she's always ready always ready then she said, yes, uh, sister, sure, I'll preach. Then I said, really? How can you, like, I'm telling you now, 11.30, how can you preach? No time. Then she said, God will give, sister. Hallelujah. I think morning she woke up. And, and then morning, when I give it away to her, then suddenly everything is clear. The word is keep coming. She knows something because she experienced with me before also. She told me, even tomorrow morning, even you say you want to preach again, that's no problem, sister, you can take your back. <laughs> so, okay, then uh, uh, morning I got a word, obedience. That word God is giving me, obedience brings deliverance. Oh my God, this is so strongly, it is coming into my heart. I want to bring this obedience teaching now. Then I said again, no, no, I think God must have given her same message. Let me check. Then I call her. If she is bringing some other message, at least I'll take 10 minutes time to tell that obedience brings deliverance. <laughs> then I called her and uh, said, uh, uh, did you get a word this morning? I called and said, oh, yes, sister. Then what word? Obedience. Oh, my God. The spirit of God is saying, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So I really feel that Amen. today, you know, uh, I've been thinking that God is going to bring deliverance. Because what the word is not just for just not for just listening, nothing. Word has come to do something in our life today. God is going to do what everything beloved. God can use even the people who is under you. God will use them to teach you something. Because the word is from God, it's not from people. Just be teachable all the time. Hallelujah. You know, uh, when people come, I'll ask Hina to come and uh, pray. And also help her out to pray for people. Mercy also pray. Hmm? Mercy pray. Bhavani pray. And uh, please help her out to pray. Hallelujah. 
Shut up and I'm gonna cut up my little